So this is about the four quadrant diagram, which we used to derive the IS curve. Now I have made a mistake, which I'll show you. The mistake is with respect to the equilibrium condition. Uh, in the simple Keynesian, see in the IS market or commodity market, we are working with the same simple Keynesian model that we had discussed in the first module. The only difference is that investment was autonomous, I equal to I bar, in this case, I equal to IR. Okay, that is the only difference. Otherwise, all the equilibrium conditions, everything is the same. Okay, so that means the equilibrium condition in the goods market. is S, which is a function of disposable income, I had written it this, like this. Okay. But my mistake was, taxes will also come into the picture. So I had left out this part. So this part shows that savings is a function of disposable income. Why is it not coming? is a function of disposable income plus taxes. You can see, uh, justify this in this way, think of it in this way, that this part, savings, is supply of funds. This is the demand of funds in the private sector. And in the government sector, this is the supply of funds to the government. Taxes are the revenue. And G is the expenditure or the demand for funds. So let me also color this. Okay. So when I drawn this, I had left out the T. Okay. So now let us uh, redraw the four diagrams. This will be the this is the forty five degree line and this. This is I and G, this is Y. Okay, so the labeling of the axis is also, was also wrong. Okay, let's draw the savings function. Let's see that this is the autonomous part of the investment. So this 
this is G. So if you think of the investment function as in this form, uh, factor, this will be negative. So this part will also include A. So it will be G plus A. Okay, so depending on the value of G bar and this autonomous part of private investment, uh, this vertical line will shift closer to this R axis or further away from the interest axis. So if government spending increases, you're going to move like this. If government spending decreases, you're going to move like this. Okay. And this is the I curve. Actually, it's not right. Uh, the I curve will be something like this. So this is the effort type. And if we add these two up, I'm going to get the I plus G curve. Okay. So if I take a particular rate of interest, going to draw this. Okay. I think as you can see that it's slightly twisted. And we can draw another. Uh, it's better not to do this. So the IS curve, the IS curve will be like this. Passing through the point, let us say this is R0, this is R1, this is the corresponding income. So this is S0 plus T0, S1 plus T1, okay. Okay, we don't have G0 sir, because sir, G is always T1 constant. T0 remains same. It depends on what type of taxes we have. So if we have lump sum taxes, then you're right. I should just write T. This will be S0 plus T and this will be S1 plus T. But if I have income tax, then this will also change. So depending on the specification of the income tax, uh, this T will either remain constant or change. Okay. So it's the same diagram that I had shown before. The only mistake, which is a major one, I should not have made it, was that this should have been plus T. Okay, is this clear?
now let us look into the change in the impact of a change in uh, T. Let's do the simple case first. So this is the 45 degree line. Okay, next is G and do I have no. And then let us suppose that G increases. So this is G0, this is G1. So that means, let us say, that this is the investment function. Okay, so this is only IR. So IR plus G will be something like this. And this will be G1. So we are adding this I to this part, to G1, not with uh, G0. Okay. So let us take the same interest rate. one of the advantages of using the four quadrant diagram is that it is very mechanical. Okay, so this is the ice curve will pass like this. And if we take another point, Sorry, it should be from here. Okay. So This is the original ice curve. Okay, now if we take the fresh ice curve, we are taking the same interest. I'm deliberately changing a little bit. So now the IS curve 
is going to pass through this point. Okay. You can also check for drawing for this line. Instead of this, you can simply So the curve should actually have been, the slope is wrong anyway. So this is the curve that we, we are getting. And as you can see over here, that what is happening is, as G is increasing, the I plus G curve, shifts to the left and I curve shifts to the right. So the implication is that For the same rate of interest, commodity market will appear at a higher level of income. Okay. So is this clear, everyone? Sir, could you show the slide once more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the advantage with the four quadrant diagram is. You just have to remember what will come in the different axis. One, so unless you make a silly mistake like I did, uh, you just have to understand that, okay, okay, you're having a change. What is the impact of the change? Is it on the investment part? In this case, how will this part change? Or is it on the savings, supply of funds part? In which case, how will this part change? Okay, that is the only thing. Otherwise, you simply have to draw the diagram connecting them. So, uh, you can think of it in this way that when the government spending increases, then this is going to have a multiplier effect on the commodity market. So demand is going to increase. And therefore, uh, since the increase in demand is more than the increase in G, the commodity market will become, will be out of equilibrium. Demand has increased, but supply has not kept pace. Therefore, you now must have further investment so that supply is increased and the market is able to clear. You don't have excess demand. Investment increases also. And as a result of this, your income goes up and the market finally clears. Okay. 
now we come to the bone of contention where i had made the rate for pa okay so over here when we are talking about taxes it again it can be simply an increase in the tax rate or it can be an increase in the savings propensity okay now if we look at look at this uh, sorry see the function is the left hand side was s y minus t plus t okay now let us suppose that income is constant so what is the immediate impact of a change in t remember that the mps is less than 1 so this mps is let us say small s this is less than 1 so that means if you look at the first part see y is constant so what is the change it is s into t the minus will come over here and here the t will change so if you take uh, this is equal to 1 minus s t so which is obviously positive so let's see how the savings function will change so let us say that this is the original savings function that means for the same y you are going to have an increase uh if you consider this to be the top then there's going to be a downward shift a downward rotation in the savings curve okay what it basic what it means is that for a particular level of income savings plus tax is going to increase therefore given y s plus t will be higher okay so the s plus t curve will rotate downwards okay is this clear is this clear everyone yes sir okay okay now will there be any change in this part the investment part there will be no change in the investment part so you have a government spending you have a vertical line you have the investment function and uh, we can simply draw the investment investment curve like this i'm assuming it's linear i'm getting a bit tired of okay so again it's very simple right and in this case 
for the same interest rate, it is going to be this. So the IS curve, we already know it's negatively sloped. So it is going to be like this. Sir, why are we writing S as a function of Y minus T, sir? We are measuring Y here. So we should write S as a function of Y. Is savings a function just of income? Or is and it a function of disposable no, income? When we are graphing it, it should be image S as a function of Y. Not as that. No, but we can. No, I'm writing the. I'm not really getting your point. Sir, I'm saying I mean, that savings. In yeah, I yeah, understand. What you're saying is, I should write it in this form, right? Yes, sir. No, but in that case, this gives the idea that savings depends only upon income. It doesn't depend upon taxes. But if I write it in this way, okay, I'm not writing the plus t. So here it means it depends upon income, which is a variable, and this is a parameter. So given taxes, your savings will depend upon income. Here T so is a add can okay. Tax add can also. So we get a culture, it should be like this. Simply like this. No, no, sir. I mean, I'm sure what a oil person would see. I is why a pashe plus theta can. Hey, but to me, what is a for me? I'm a lekha which is chill. Ekane. Nasser, Nasser, Nasser. A is a function of disposable income. Tarpore theta at can of what's yammer. Why is this dusty coming? See, the equilibrium condition in, in the goods market is S plus T equal to I plus G. Simple Keynesian model, eh? Without the government sector, we had in the S scheme, if we don't have a government sector, the equilibrium condition is SY equal to I bar. Johan Amra government sector Niyashi. We have to introduce taxes and government. So this is a function of disposable income and T. This is a function. This is I plus G. So you can think of this as the supply of uh, funds. And this is the demand for funds. So S is the private supply. When households are supplying to the private sector, to private investment. So this goes to fund investment, private investment. Okay. So households are savings and the saving goes to the private investors. And the T is households are supplying to the 
government sector they are funding government expenditure So this is the forty-five degree line. Yes, okay, I'm discussing the simple Keynesian model. So aggregate supply is Y, and aggregate demand is C Y plus I. There is no garment. So we can rewrite this Y equal to C Y plus I, or Okay, so this is AD equal to AS, and this is CY plus I. Okay. So this will be the, if we use the investment savings, this is SY and this is I bar. Okay. So this is the equilibrium. Why in both cases? Is it clear? Now let us introduce the garment sector. How does the Keynesian model change? Aggregate supply is still Y, but now aggregate demand is. Just one second. This is I plus D minus T. This will be I, I plus, plus D. G minus minus T. And then we'll take the uh, this side.
so this is savings this whole term is savings Yeah, so and if you have savings plus tax, so that will be disposable income, like S as a function, right? Uh, S function of Y D. Which one? Oh, uh, this one. Yes. This is oh, sorry. So this will be the, uh, this is the saving it investment, equilibrium condition, and this is the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, equilibrium condition. Okay, so thank you, Ayn. So given this, if you have S plus T, this is I plus zero, and this is S plus T. So it's easy to see from here that the function will come down, will rotate down. Actually, it's moving up, but because we are drawing it in a negative quadrant, it appears that it's going to go down. It rotates downwards. So again, when we have an increase in uh, what is happening over here, you have higher, uh, yeah, you have higher taxes. And as a result of this,
given out, it clears at a lower income. So the income is income has decreased given the same rate of interest. Oh, it only zero for it. Okay, so I'll just recapitulate that uh, in the simple Keynesian model, if we do not have in the simple Keynesian model without the government sector, it will be simply the equilibrium condition is simply aggregate demand, which is consumption plus investment. This is equal to aggregate supply. Why? Okay, so this can be restated as the y equal to consumption plus investment condition can be restated to this condition. Investment is equal to savings. So if you use the aggregate demand, aggregate supply, this is the condition. And if you want to use the i equal to s, this is how we draw it. Once we introduce the garment sector, we are introducing two things. One is garment spending, which adds to uh, your aggregate demand. So apart from the households, apart from the private investors, you have the government sector who demands commodities. At the same time, the government must fund the resources. So we have taxes. So taxes are imposed on income and reduces the income level. So instead of consumption being a function of Y, it's a function of disposable income. Okay, so as uh, Oyn showed that y minus c equal to i plus g, and we can simply bring the minus t on both sides to get a reformulation of this investment saving equilibrium condition. So instead of i equal to s, we have s plus t is equal to i plus g. Here, s plus t you can see is the supply of funds, and this i plus g is the demand for funds. So household supply savings to private investment and they supply taxes, they pay taxes to the government sector and fund their investment. So this part is the supply to the private investment sector. This part is the supply to the public sector, to the government sector. <coughs> Now remember that over here we have kept both i and g as constant. Okay, so in the ISLM model, we instead of keeping i as autonomous, we make it a function of rate of interest. So the g is still autonomous. We now have a downward slope, negatively sloped investment curve, the dotted line. So this is just i. Therefore, the i plus g will be this, this line plus this. So it will shift by basically this amount. Hmm? Just one second. I need to put it there. Hello, I'm going to break. 
করলাম কঙ্কনা তুমি জিজ্ঞেস করছিলে বোধ হয় কবে মেকআপ টেস্ট হবে তো আমরা ফিফথ সিক্স একটা প্ল্যান করছি সেটাও আমাদের ডিইসিটা হবে ডিইসিটা করে তোমাদের জানিয়ে দেবো ফিফথ অ্যান্ড সিক্সথ অফ জুন এটা একটা আমরা ভাবছি হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে so this and this part should be equal it's not equal over here but just uh, assume that it's equal okay so the i will shift the ig will shift from the i curve by this amount equal to the autonomous part so given the this i plus g curve we can simply trace the uh, take a rate of interest and find out different points on the is curve and as we have seen the is curve will be negatively sloped okay then we come to an impact of a change in g as g is increasing the curve will shift rightwards uh, sorry it will shift leftwards therefore the i plus g curve will also shift leftwards and as you can see the is curve is going to go up it is going to increase so that means given the same rate of interest the market will clear at a higher level of income because government spending has gone up that means demand has gone up so the supply also should increase okay okay next we come to a change in taxes so when there is a change in tax this function let us suppose there is an increase in tax if there is an increase in tax the line is going to shift downwards the supply of funds has increased now if taxes go up then what happens to aggregate demand aggregate demand is falling because your disposable income has fallen so in that case the market will again clear but it will clear at a lower level of income so given the same interest rate y0 will become y1 so is this part clear or is there any other doubt okay in this case a g increase stimulates aggregate demand which will stimulate or cause income increase I'll take five minutes more, and then I'll close. So I just want to introduce you to the other side of the market. Uh, 
the commodity uh, sorry the money market we said that in the islm model we had three markets commodity market which we have discussed we have the bond market and we have the money market now i had said that the bond market and money market are mirror images of each other so that is why uh, if there's excess demand in the bond market there's going to be excess supply in the money market and vice versa but why exactly why it is a mirror image needs explanation so i'm not going to go into the argument straight away but just introduce some terms so bonds consoles coupon rate of interest and market rate of interest and then i'm going to close the discussion today's class okay okay bond is a type of investment or rather it's a type of asset when the company or government the government can also issue bonds so the company borrows money from the public at a rate of interest let us suppose it is r and repays the loan after t years so an example is that rupees 1000 bond is issued and at a rate of interest of let us say 10 rupees for 10 years so that means if you buy a bond the bond holder will get how much is 10 100 rupees so he is going to get rupees 100 for 10 years and on the 10th year he will the bond will be redeemed so that means he will get back rupees 1000 is this clear okay now the face value is the price at which the company issues the bond so here it is 1000 okay okay consoles are perpetual bonds they are normally issued by the government so that means it is going to be like this okay 
the bond will never be redeemed. Okay, so every year he is going to get 100 rupees, but the bond will never be repaid by the government. Okay, so after the person dies, his sons and daughters will inherit it and they will get the uh, 100 rupees. Okay, now the coupon rate of interest, just as you have the face value, you have a coupon rate of interest. So this is the rate of interest which is given in the bond. Okay. Now what can actually happen is that in 2000, let us say in 2020, the government has issued a bond of this amount. Now, exactly why we are going to discuss later on. Uh, okay, let's look at this. Now, suppose the this 10% is the bond rate, right? It is the what is called the coupon rate of interest. Now, suppose the market rate becomes This is the actual interest rate prevailing. In the market. So that means suppose uh, people are issuing bonds now. What is the rate at which they are issuing the bonds? So let us suppose that they are issuing the bonds at 20%. Okay, so now let us say that someone you have already purchased this bond. This is bond A, and you have already purchased it. So, will you want to hold on to the bond? And you will want to sell it, right? Now, will anyone buy this bond? So suppose I come to you and say, that, look, I have a bond for uh, the interest rate, the coupon rate is 10%, and I'll sell it for 1,000. Will you buy the bond? No, sir. If you have the money, it's better to buy the new bond, right? Now, suppose I offer the bond for rupees 500. Now, will you buy it? See, how much have you invested? You have invested not 1,000, but only 500. What is the interest amount that you're getting? 100. You're getting? So what is the interest rate? 20. This is no, what 
っつら。そうよ、あたたきはべた。So twenty percent twenty. はん、this will be? thousand. This will be twenty percent. So, so currently bonds are investing, are issuing bonds at twenty percent, and if you get the bond, the old bond for five hundred, your interest rate will be the same. Okay, so you have a face value of the bond. And this is the market price of the bond. Okay. Now let's take the opposite case. The bond is issued at the new bonds are being issued at five percent. Okay, so let us suppose that the price of bond goes up; it increases. Suppose the market rate falls to five percent. In that case, if I sell the bond to you for one thousand, you are making a gain. But suppose I sell the price, the old bond is sold at a price of, let us say, two thousand. So that means your interest amount is still hundred, and what is the interest rate? This will be five percent. Okay, so if you ask the bond, if you come to me and say that okay, I want to buy the bond, I will not sell it, sell the bond to you at one thousand, because in that case, you will give me one thousand, I will invest it in the market, and I'm going to get much less. It's better for me to hold on to the bond. But suppose you buy the bond from me at two thousand, you're happy because you're getting. Five percent. If you have invested in the new bonds, you would still have got five percent. You have invested in an old bond. You have brought the old bond at a higher price, but still your rate of interest is five percent. And I'm also happy because with the money that I have, I'm earning the same amount. Okay. So what we can see over here is that. Bond prices and interest rates are inversely related. Okay. So, with this, I want to I'll close today's class. Sir, is this interest rate same as from the IS market? Yes.
I'll come to more details in the next class. I've only is shown one result, but I'm yet to show that the bond and money market are mirror images of each other. So in the next class, I'm going to discuss the definition of money and bring both the money market and bond market into the analysis. Okay, now let me stop the recording because I don't want this to be posted on the net. Yeah, UG same too, right? So I think this will. So you can have a look at this. Okay, will I close the the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, then uh, we'll meet again on uh, when will I take Friday or next Tuesday? Okay, sir. What do you mean by okay? I asked you a question Friday or next Tuesday? So we have both classes, I think. Let's see what happens in Calcutta. If necessary, uh, you can inform me if you want the Friday class to be dropped. Okay, I'm long enough now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.